What's going on guys? This is the Wobble Fett, and welcome to Mechanics Monday, a series where I pick a mechanic to analyze each week that may be underexplored or unknown to players in the VGC community. This week, we're going to be looking at the mechanics of two moves that are seeing lots of use in VGC 2020, Body Press and Strength Sap, in addition to looking at Foul Play, since it's really similar. Body Press is an 80 base power fighting type physical attack that says, the higher the user's defense, the more damage it can inflict on the target. This has led some players to be surprised when things like Violite doesn't boost Body Press's damage, and when things like Burn weaken Body Press's damage. After all, if the attack is based purely off of a defense, you might expect those types of things to happen. What really happens is that Body Press only uses the attacker's starting defense stat, or the defense stat you see in the summary screen, and any defense boosts or drops from stuff like Iron Defense or Screech. For everything else, it's treated as a regular physical attack. Let's see some examples, along with damage calculations to show what's going on. My Ferrothorn here uses Sword Stance, then Body Press into my ally Corviknight. As you can see, my Corviknight takes around 20% damage. However, if I use Iron Defense with Ferrothorn first, then use Body Press into Corviknight, it takes closer to 40% damage, which is twice as much as before. Let's see what happens after Ferrothorn gets burned. After a burn, you can see Body Press does much less damage to Corp Knight, only doing around half of what it was damaging normally. What happens if I skill swap Huge Power over to Ferrothorn? Digger's B here has Huge Power, and I'm skill swapping it over to Ferrothorn so it has doubled attack. Now, you might think that it wouldn't do any good to give Ferrothorn Huge Power, but as you can see from the damage calculation, it did get factored in for the purposes of Body Press's additional damage. Let's do the same thing, but with Marvel Scale from Milotic skill swapped onto Ferrothorn. In addition, I've paralyzed Ferrothorn so the Marvel Scale defense boost will be active. However, as you can see from the damage against Corviknight, Marvel Scale doesn't apply a 50% boost to damage for the purposes of Body Press. Finally, just to drive in the point some more, here I have a Rhydon holding a Violite. Using Body Press with 131 defense and holding a Violite does 31 damage to my Corviknight. However, if I use Knock Off on Rhydon, removing its Violite, and use Body Press again, you can see it does about the exact same amount of damage to Corviknight. It did not get substantially weaker. So, why does this happen? Well, this is where having a solid understanding of the damage formula can be very helpful. Body Press is just like Foul Play. All it does is replace the starting attack and boosts and drops with the Pokémon's starting defense and boosts and drops. So, like Foul Play, all Body Press does is replace the numbers you start with. Then, everything else applies like normal. Things like Choice Band, Guts, Plus or Minus, Light Ball, etc. will all apply for the user of Body Press or Foul Play. You might notice that Burn isn't in the list here, and that's just because Burn gets applied at a separate place in the damage formula, closer to type effectiveness. Properly speaking, Burn halves the damage of physical attacks. It doesn't actually modify the attack stat itself at all. But you don't have to know the damage formula to be able to understand what works for Body Press and Foul Play. To summarize, all you do with Body Press is replace the attack stat with the Pokémon's defense stat and you replace any boosts and drops in attack with boosts and drops in defense. In a similar way, Foul Play works by replacing the Pokémon's attack stat with the opponent's attack stat, and it replaces Foul Play's boosts and drops with the opponent's boosts and drops. After you do that replacement, it's back to behaving like a normal physical attack. To give an example of this with Foul Play, if I use Foul Play into my Choice Band Rotom here with 66 attack, then my NK is using Rotom's raw 66 attack, but not Rotom's Choice Band. As you can see, it dealt 36 damage. But if I trick that Choice Band over to my NK, now it uses Rotom's raw 66 attack still, but it factors in the Choice Band boost, because it's the user of Foul Play that matters for things like Choice Band. After Choice Band, NK now does 52 damage with Foul Play, 
which is roughly 1.5 times stronger than before. Of course, Body Press and Foul Play only have their unique properties as regular moves. If you use Max Knuckle or Max Darkness based on Body Press or Foul Play, it treats it as a regular Max move and will use the user's attack stat like normal. As you can see here, my Ferrothorn's plus 6 defense Body Press does a decent chunk to this Dynamaxed Corviknight. If I use Max Knuckle based on Body Press though, the damage is pitiful because Ferrothorn isn't using its defense stat anymore on Max Knuckle itself. If you can get a solid grasp on how Body Press and Foul Play works, you'll be in great shape for understanding Strength Sap. That's because Strength Sap works the exact same way. Strength Sap heals your Pokémon's HP by the amount of attack the target has. However, it only uses the Pokémon's starting attack stat and any boosts and drops it might have. So for example, if my Drifbum here uses Strength Sap onto my ally Excadrill with 187 attack, it would restore 187 HP, which is quite a lot. After Excadrill is at minus 1 attack, my Drifbum will now recover less HP. 187 times 2 divided by 3 to account for the minus 1 attack equals 124.6 repeating, which floors down to 124. This means that Drifbum will now only heal 124 HP from this interaction. Just to provide a couple of other examples to drive home the point, if my Excadrill is burned, then Strength Sap is used on it, Drifbum still recovers 187 HP, not half of that, because Strength Sap only considers the starting attack and any boosts or drops applied to the attack. In a similar way, if my Excadrill was holding a Choice Band, again, it still makes no difference, because Strength Sap is only going to consider the starting attack and boosts and drops when deciding how much HP to heal. Strength Sap has a few additional mechanics that might be useful to know. First, if a Pokémon is already at minus 6 attack, you can't heal any more HP from using Strength Sap on it. It will just say, but it failed. However, if you can't lower attack by some other means, like Clear Body for example, then you still heal HP equal to the Clear Body Pokémon's attack, like you normally would. For example, I'm able to heal 142 attack just fine from my Clear Body Dragapult here. Of course, as you can see, Dragapult's attack doesn't actually get lowered. In a similar way, if you use Strength Sap into a Mirror Armor Corviknight, the attack drop is bounced back to Corviknight, but you still heal HP identical to the attack stat of Corviknight itself. So my Drifblum here recovers Corviknight's 108 attack in HP, not Drifblum's own attack or something like that. Because Strength Sap and Foul Play rely on your opponent's attack stat, it can be very important to run minimum attack IVs on your special attackers so the opposing Pokémon either heals less or takes less damage. For example, suppose I have a special Dragapult that only knows special attacks like Shadow Ball and Draco Meteor. If I had 31 attack IVs with Dragapult, you can see here that Mandibuzz's Foul Play has a 25% chance to 1 KO me. It's not super high odds, but if you reduce Dragapult's attack IVs down to zero, that would never happen, and that's a big deal. In a similar way, if a Jellicent uses Strength Sap into a special attacking Arcanine, would you rather the Jellicent recover 117 HP or 103 HP? A difference of 14 HP could be hugely significant in denying Jellicent the extra bit of health it needs to recover back its massive HP stat. I would strongly encourage using zero attack IVs on your special attackers where you can as a result. It does take longer to breed, but the advantages are well worth the extra time spent, in my opinion. And that's all for this week's Mechanics Monday. Hopefully you now have a solid grasp of how Body Press, Foul Play, and Strength Sap all work. If you still have questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll do my best to answer them. Until next time, have a good one.